listen to the final review of Resident <laughs> Evil, the final chapter, Krieger Margin has some very breaking news of this film involving the number of injuries. So there's two accidents on this film, and I don't know which one is worse because they're very bad. There was a crew member that was hit by an unsteered Humvee and smashed, and after he went to the hospital, he, he died from complications. This one might be worse. <laughs> Olivia Jackson was a stunt double for the, play, the chick who plays Alice on a motorcycle accident, and there's supposed to be a crane. The crane stopped operating, and it was supposed to miss her mid-thing, and she tried to stop it with her hand mid-air. That did not work. She moves her hand. So, more than that. Uh, so she had the following, she had the following in injuries. A twisted spine, nerves torn, leaking cerebral fluid, a degloved face, and that's where the skin, the skin and tissues come off of your face when you can see your teeth and bones. Um, a shattered eye socket that they had to reconstruct with tweezers. A cheekbone shard that went through and stabbed her eardrums. Fingers were completely torn off from her hand. An entire bone was ripped from her arm and forcing her amputation. And as uh, to make up for that, the producers gave her thirty-three thousand dollars. Thirty-three dollars. Thirty-three thousand dollars. <laughs> so then she sued. She years later, her her and her family <laughs> sued the producers and won and got a whole bunch of money. But they almost canceled the movie because of this. Uh, the chick who plays Alice visited her in the hospital this entire time ongoing, um, and they almost didn't finish the movie purely because of this accident. The universe said, don't make this movie! Shouldn't know. Listen to the universe! Now listen. We are about to watch the final chapter. Maybe there were forces beyond our power that were trying to tell us to now watch this movie or not this movie for it to be made. There's also two different delays due to people being pregnant, too. Maybe this is why this was the final chapter. Alice was pregnant, so they delayed it a whole year. Ah! Maybe that's why they killed the fucking series after this. Ah! Anyways, the next time you'll see us, Ooh, we're ending this fucking series. <laughs>
camera's just going all over the place. Do you guys notice this was the first movie in the entire franchise that didn't have any songs during a fight scene? Yeah, true. Yes, which was kind of nice because you could enjoy that fight scene. Yeah. It um, wasn't a bunch of... Blah, blah, blah. And there was a Mortal Kombat reference I don't think you guys saw. Um, at one point where they were driving a vehicle, there was a Raiden bobblehead. I will talk about the things I like about this film. There are 15 things I like about this film. Number one. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Ned, nada. No, I, I know what it is. I was just making a joke. <laughs> Can't read your own fucking hand like you always do. Uh, I, I really liked that the, 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 in, I'm not going to talk about how much I dislike this. I'll talk about that later. But I liked that the first infection started from a kid. That was a cool little angle. Um, I enjoyed the first jump scare of the movie. That was really good. They didn't do a whole lot of jump scares previously in the series, so I thought that was good. It got at least one of us in the review. I enjoyed the new monster. They're in the description of the movie. It says it, it says that demons, zombies, and something else is roaming the earth. That's a little bit more in the demon side. That in the Red Resident Evil universe, that's demonic. They didn't really do it other than the opening scene and the ending scene, which is a little weird. It's almost like they used it for plot, but we're going to ignore that. I'm really glad Isaac is back, mainly because the director is a really good actor. I enjoy his work. Um, the hung zombies that were still alive was a good touch. Um, I liked that zombie dogs were back. I miss zombie dogs. Uh, the vents that they did later in the movie was a good concept, even though there's negative parts that I'll get to. And then they had they had slight um, a slight reference that I thought was kind of like Mortal Kombat when she was fighting the liquor was she had the the, the chain like scorpion and then mm -hmm. she put it in the dude's chest and she pulled on him. So and the only reason I say slight is because again the director of this directed Mortal Kombat so he liked to add little things like that in there. And I really liked the Isaac clones. I wrote that like t towards the end whenever I was like where'd this other one come from? And then he comes in and he stops. Mm -hmm. and, uh, bad things about that one too but the the, the levels of it was good. Trinity of bitches. I really like that. That was line. good. That was a good line. The Trinity of bitches, united in their hatred. I almost wrote that as a negative, but it was like borderline, and I was like, I like it. The Wesker, <laughs> you're fired scene was probably a highlight of the movie for that. That was that was, that was really good. Like Island fifty percent. I felt like the introductions, the Island fifty percent of the company thing was a little long, but the actual act of hey, you're fired. Like, yeah, it was like possibly like, okay, so what the fuck does that have to do? I kind of wish that they would have done, uh, I'd get for plot for him to explode the bomb. They needed to have him hold that grenade for a minute, but I kind of wish it would have been something extremely brutal that would have instantly killed him because he was a long time bad guy. I like the continuation <laughs> and return of the fun box. That's what I would call it. It's what, huh? the, the laser. Oh, the laser box. <laughs> I call it the fun box because it reminds box. me of things in the video. Oh, he was having fun. Um, I really enjoyed that, and like one of the lasers going back and forth, they were starting to undo all the grime and dust. It was a return to the origin of the series, which was the first, ironically, it was the first stupid thing that I saw that pissed me off, and it is the last stupid thing that I saw that pissed me off. The grenade scene, was that was cool and kind of clever, but it was cool and clever. And the other Isaacs, I kind of touched on that. That's all the stuff I liked about it. So my negatives... Um, I'm going to say all of my negatives real fast. This is going to be the longest negatives I've ever given it before. Yeah. I have exactly 40 negative things I'm going to discuss now. I will go as quick as I went with the other ones. The intro was really bad. Um, it, every single movie in this entire series had a really bad intro where they're, in, uh, where they're introducing story that should have already been established throughout the series. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. Um, I should be going into this movie at most with, with an influence of what's going on now, not what's gone on since the first movie. They should not talk anything about anything else unless there's been a several five, ten years where they didn't do a word. Too many fucking retcons in this movie and in the series in general. I'm, I'm not even going to count. I'm going to let Mike deep dive and put how many retcons are in this series on the, on the screen. I don't even know either. Um, what really pissed me off is in previous movies, um, Wesker was over Isaac's reporting from higher-ups, like, whenever he was going to be replaced. But now they've retconned it where well, this entire time Isaac was over him. And that pissed me pissed me off so much. They made Wesker look like a badass in the previous ones. And and then and then uh, Isaac was a little bitch, but now Isaac's not a little bitch. But then Wesker was a good guy, but now he's a bad guy. The whole thing was stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I did here, but I wrote... 
play more question mark. Probably. Oh, the fact that, that she survived, she the, would claymore. survive the claymore. Oh blowing. wait, no, I remember it now. The explosion from the explosion from the claymore blowing up there, I felt like it was too big and it was a little unrealistic. And that's when I said she survived that. Um, I was, I'm super annoyed by the, I, I, I wrote this that early when the Claymore thing, magic antivirus, that, that was going to save everybody. And you just put it down and it's going to save it. That's, it is convenient, stupid plot point they added in. It really felt like whenever she, the red woman or whatever was on there, she was giving it like a mission, you, you're on a game and they're doing a mission. It was pretty much like Retribution when they did the fucking loading screens, yep. but not as bad. This, this felt worse to me. That one Metal Gear Solid moment where he jokes about that pissed me off. Um, I felt like the explosions in this entire film were fucking terrible. Like, I know when it first started, I was talking about the CGI of the demon, and I was like, wow, that looks really good. But all of the explosions were terrible, especially the motorcycle scene. I wrote this whenever they first... You know the guy that was the double agent? Michael, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I just can't see your face. Okay. I'm here. The guy who... The doc? So the guy who... Yeah, so who was... And I, at that time, I thought the black guy was the doc. Hey, Doc. But I was wrong. Um, anyways, so that guy was, like, unnecessarily, like, defensive and against her, and I was like, why is this guy so fucking, like, it was, like, super weird, and I was like, this guy's unnecessarily douchey, but it was, doesn't make sense for him to be a spy, that was, you know. and, and they didn't even expand on this at all, but why, why did Isaac, like, become religious and culty with all those people? Yeah, they didn't really explain that at all in any of the other movies, just said, oh, he suddenly is. Well, obviously he came back, so they're like, what the fuck, where did he come from? The chick who played Batwoman was in there, so that's an automatically not off. Uh, <laughs> just to be killed off. At this time, it was probably because she was on Orange is New Black, and they just wanted a hot... Like, that's also what she's in. Yeah. yeah, that's where she became famous, I believe. So earlier in the movie, um, they said, Alice specifically said, he's got an army of zombies with him. And then an army of zombies show up, and the doctor guy says, oh my god, it's an army. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. That's why they, they set up all those traps for an army of zombies. She wasn't kidding. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's an army. No shit, Sherlock. The machine gun that the um redhead chick Claire Claire Redfield um was using what is commonly known as a PP2000, which does not have a very big clip, and she used way more than what that gun would hold, and did not reload that at all. There was an Asian-looking chick um, that was during the first assault um, that was in there, and when they were trying to close the bridge, a zombie went through and bit her, bit her on the neck, and she instantly died. Like she just fell to the ground and instantly died, and that pissed me off. But she didn't turn into a zombie either, and she just instantly fell to the ground and died, as if she just got some chloroform in the mouth or something. Like that. The Tower of Fire thing pissed me off. That it magically was going to all of those. I don't. I looked away from the screen for a moment. I looked up, and magically there was fire going all over to this entire... I understand the circle, but then it was going out out the of there. Zombies flammable. And then the, just specifically the zombies were flammable. And then, while they're seeing all the zombies light on fire, while they're in their armored vehicles, he says, back up! <laughs> we don't want to get hit by that fire in our armored vehicles! And then, yeah, and then they didn't back up, and then she gets on top of the vehicle, and she pours some gas tor on top of the vehicle. So, And then when she... <laughs> poured some gas through the vents on the top of the vehicle, gas sprouted, uh, it, the whole thing blew up, and fire was spurting out of all the windows in every possible direction, but somehow fucking Isaac survived that without barely charring him. Did you guys see where the triple barrel shotgun came into play? It was given to her, I think. From who? Where? Somebody in the Somebody. group. Okay. Well, that pissed me off just seeing a triple barrel shotgun almost as much as the goddamn quarter shotgun. <laughs> and she had like, she had like, she uh, even had the quarter shotgun in the beginning, <laughs> I think. When I looked at, the, when, when she just pulled it out from underneath the motorcycle, that was the first time I saw it. Because I was trying not to kill myself while I was watching this goddamn movie. I honestly would prefer the quarter shotgun over the triple barrel shotgun because it was actually something like, does it have three triggers in it? Like, it, it was just, it, I think it was just one barrel. Just one, no, triggers. Is there, is there one trigger for each barrel, or do you just shoot it and it goes left to right? Or how, 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 how does that work? We'll have to watch the they, four and five again. I don't want to do also, that. Also, not a sponsor, but Nerf's able to do it, so I'd imagine somebody could do it, too. Also, the triple <laughs> barrel shotgun, I did, did she reload it? Did anybody see She reloaded she it reloaded a couple times. She, okay, so she only shot six of those through the whole movie, then, max. Well, she didn't shoot it very much. Okay, that's good. The humans that were inside of the vehicle, whenever the gas apparently blew up the entire surface of it, that went out all the windows, it didn't hurt any of the, the humans that were inside of there. 
the zombie horde logic didn't make sense at times. Whenever they got inside of the facility, after the zombie, you know, after they were all afraid and everything, there, uh, there, it felt like a loading screen where they showed the video game like mechanical map as you're going between screens. That pissed me off because I hate that that they consistently do that. There's an inaccurate meeting um, that was about the global warming and how the world's going to end and the timeline they gave. That whole meeting pissed me off, and it was just like I think so. That was just bullshit. Like it, it was there. And then they're just like, huh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, also the zombie logic. There, there were times where like, Romney? zombies are chasing people, <laughs> but the zombies never catch up. And then when they stop, the zombies never run to the front. The zombies never try to climb on the side. And it's like, they're, like, they, they're able to stop, clip the guy into the thing, and then drive the thing away. And there's no zombies during that entire like five-minute scene. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> instant <powerful>. zombies. <laughs> and then, to back up his, his argue, sound argument about how the world's going to they have solar ice caps that burn in 40 years. And we're it covered die. the entire planet. Uh, the entire planet. He decided to start Bible study. And then, yeah. <laughs> and that got the Bible thumpers on, on his side. And they're just like, well, God, Jesus, dude, we might as well do it too. At this time, I was pissed. Countless things that looked like loading screens and video games. Yes. And they start so scribbling stuff on your paper. There was actually a couple times, Mike, where you looked over at me and laughed because I wrote something positive, And then I was like, ah. Oh. And then something stupid happened with that same second layer. And I was <laughs> <laughs> Which when I get to that one, I'll tell you about that. Oh my god! This was the first one I've seen where Alice was not half naked during the film. Or That's had right. Kind of yeah. oh, I, mean, I wrote the point on that one. Now that was in, halfway through the movie, and I wrote in parentheses behind it yet, just in case, because you never know. No, well, that's a negative. The, yes, that was a negative. That's inconsistent. Yeah, they did it through the rest it's of the like series. The dogs. They need to finish strong. And they're like, hey, somebody's watching us, and then Batwoman over here does the flip off of their thumb. That was really cringe. That wasn't. It was supposed to be like, hey, look, I'm a badass, but the next thing you get sucked into a fan anyway. So mm -hmm. this right. sucks so much. It's almost as bad as suck suck through a hole in a metal grate in a okay. spaceship Here's my caused by a vacuum. Oh, this sucks on so many levels. They entered this facility, this nice facility, right? Um, where the fuck were all these defenses in the first movie? Moving on to my next point, a uh, plot power. Well, the power went on and off when it was convenient to plot it. It's a movie that's going to do that, but it was, like, super obvious. This is the one that made me very angry. When the vent scene happened, I wrote that I like the vent thing. The first guy fell, and I was like, wow, that's cool. And then it sucked the other two people down, the other several people in the vents that did not instantly kill them. One person, like Alice, and the other people got to go into a nice little morgue and fight a little zombie. And then the other person gets to go uh, fall safely into a, a thing that she can break out of. But the random guy that doesn't matter goes into something that he had no chance of ever surviving. Why would they just not do that with everyone? Just have all of them instantly die, and then there's no way to save the human race. Which Wesker was well, apparently... Well, then the movie would end. Uh, yes, and Wesker was in control of that. So why did... There's no logic for him to let have her to take a safe landing. Why didn't he just have her get killed off since she's the most important one? My God, I would... I, I would... I... He's stuttering. I... It was very hard for me not to write this 70 times. Camera cuts. Camera cuts. Camera cuts. Camera cuts. I... Uh, so bad. The camera cuts were awful in this movie. It made me want to shake shaky shoot and quick and just ridiculous. And then... Like blinking a thousand times over and over. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, right after a scene where, where the camera is going all over the place, she goes to put her knife back in her boot, and it has the cheesiest, stupid sound effect that... Oh, the, this is, this is uh, something I think you guys were arguing about. Um, it, the what-ifs in her brain, where she's playing out what to do here, here, and here. Um, I, I was like, I swear to God, if we have a Twilight moment where it's going to play out an entire scene and everything, everyone dies, and then it goes back to the beginning, and it's like, oh, everyone didn't die. It pissed me off. I hated the original, the, she, the original Alice thing. That that twist was stupid. I called it from the very beginning. Um, Alice is a clone. I didn't like that at all either. That's stupid. Um, super strength. They're just ignoring that. It doesn't do it organ damage or anything. She got the holy shit beat out of her and she somehow escapes with nothing but fingers, fingers cut off that wasn't even done and by possibly the possibly a person. hairline fracture in her wrist. Also, they said she still has the T-virus. She should have died. Their concept of time did not make sense at all throughout <laughs> this entire film. Like, it was like the first half was just like holy shit, already halfway through the movie and the second half you're just like this 
fucking thing working? Isaac kills Isaac, question mark. I get it, you're upset, but you can't be that upset. You should know. And that causes his own He was death. also spiritually cuckoo at that point. He literally stopped himself. Yeah, and he literally, like, I caused his own death. Well, up, to that, up to that point, I thought to myself, oh, he's leading the zombies there because he knows he's a clone and it doesn't matter and he, it, it, it will help stop. No, he's he's straight bananas. I think no. he's sucking on something in the free time. The airborne logic. She she said that it would, you know, it's because of the winds and it's going to take forever to get to get around to everybody. But then the, when the entire army's there and it's convenient, it took everybody out almost instantly. It reminded me of whenever um, in, in Lord of the Rings, whenever <laughs> Sauron died, <laughs> and then everyone got knocked over instantly. It was oh, that's pretty convenient for plot point. Let's go into Mordor. And then finally, um, my 40th point that I wrote on this, just to make it nice and even, the ending, I did not care about it at all, and I just wanted to stab a fork through my mouth. Specifically your mouth? And you're giving this a rating of? Specifically. <laughs> so I'm, I usually do my... my. <laughs> you can't find the first page. Oh, I ripped it and folded it up in pieces. So usually what I do... Is, is I'll have my negatives and my positives, and I'll mark off each to each. And by how many negatives to positive I had, you'd think I'd put it a one, but I didn't do that. I had it between a four and a five until I got about to the ending, and then I was like, well, it was almost before the ending. I was like, well, I know I'm going to put this at a four. And then I watched the ending, and I crossed out four and five, and I changed it to a three. The, this movie is terrible. It's not the worst thing I've seen in my entire life. But the making of the movie has so many issues with it. The lot, speaking of which, I need to. Oh, there's my there's my first page. <laughs> this is a three. I hated this. This is. I want my time back. The review has now been like forty five minutes. Okay, on to, on to the second part. This movie was not. I'm gonna preface this. This was not a good movie. And I don't think this movie's going to get a higher number than some of the other ones. But I enjoyed this movie. As I told my compadres, I think it might be that my brain's like, oh, yay, it's over. Give it a good rating so you never have to go back. There was a lot of stuff that Krieger wrote down that I, I agreed with um, on the negative side, also, also on the positive side. Out of all of the movies, this one had, like, the lowest quality. At the very beginning, I was like, oh, good, this is pretty good quality. Oh, the CGI is pretty good. And then, the, like, it was just cutscenes. Like, the whole movie was just cutscenes. I liked this movie I, I in in that I think it had really good fight scenes. Compared to some of the other ones. What I mean is the other ones are, like, like epic kung fu and, and a bunch of other stuff. This one actually had, like, more person-to-person -person actual fighting. I liked the level of planning when they were in the tower, all the different things they did. I don't think they had time to do that. I liked the tanks that they drove. One of the big things for me that I liked was they brought Isaac back. Wesker was really weird in the first movie that they showed him in, and then in the next, was it the next movie? Next two movies, he was just like overpowered Matrix character, and I didn't like that in a villain because he wasn't like villainy. He didn't have like reasons behind him. He was just like, I'm doing this because I want to, because. I'm the ultimate man. And then he dies, supposedly, and he comes back and goes, oh, I need your help, because the ultimate woman, the computer, is trying to stop me. But then, like, at no point does he have, like, like reasons for doing what he's doing. They never explain that in either of those movies, and it, that's what messed with my whole brain. When it goes to, to Isaac, when they bring him back, when they did the intro, I didn't like the intro, because I felt like that, like Krieger said, it should have been earlier. But I liked it, because it... It explained what the frick was going on. Because throughout all the series, and these guys have heard me say it several times, how the frick did they build this thing underground? How the frick did they do that? How the frick is this a thing? Why the frick would they do that? Why the frick would they do this? And what I mean is the first movie, it's like, oh no, save the outbreak. Second movie is like, explode the city to contain it, but it still comes out, which they started it in the city, and so that didn't make any sense. And that bad guy was kind of cheesy, and they killed him. And I was like, oh, it's this Isaac character. And then it's the Isaac's like, this sad little scientist. And then he gets this mutant thing. And it's like, oh, well, he's dead or he's going to slowly turn into a mutant. And so you go through and you go through and then you learn the clones mm -hmm. in the next movie. And it's like, her clones are not as good as her. That kind of aspect. And they go into this weird, like, underground water city. 
and you get into Wesker and the boat, and I mean, I know the boat was before that, but a bunch of it didn't make any sense. And I know they retconned a bunch of stuff, and I liked that in this. I actually liked it because the, some of the stuff they retconned was stuff that they shouldn't have put in the damn movie to begin with, in the series, and all of the series. Like, we're just doing evil shit because we're evil, and we have no plan, and we're just trying to destroy the entire Earth. But then they actually make sense of that. And it's like, magical virus. Um, throughout the series, I was like, how the, when she releases the virus, how is that going to help? And it's not. She was supposed to kill Isaac because when she kills Isaac, he's not in control. And then the queen can set up facilities and things other places to help the humans. And so I felt like there was a lot of stuff they shouldn't have added in the other movies that I'm glad they got rid of in this movie. I did like that they explained all the stuff that seemed like stupid stuff in the other ones. Why would have this facility? Why the heck have this? Why the heck would you do trials? Why would you want everybody to buy all of this stuff? It seemed like it was going nowhere and they were just trying to... Uh, Fast and Furious said, just let's throw out a bunch of ridiculous stuff to make it cool and interesting. And then... Sorry. Wee! <laughs> We're having cat problems. And then I, I did like the Alice triple story ending. I did, I did like that. The, you know, hey, I'm giving you my memories. Hey, I'm the computer. Hey, I'm going to die. Because that was the whole thing. And then I liked that Isaac was the bad villain at the start in the, from the beginning. And he's the bad villain at the end. And then his own cloning process, the, 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 the clone they, both the good guy and the bad guy die, but the 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 good guy being the uh, the the young girl growing old in the wheelchair, her clone saves the planet along with her clone computer. Versus the bad guy literally gets killed by his like religiosity twisted clone version of himself, and then gets attacked by zombie monsters. That fundamental aspect of the story and then blending all that together made this movie interesting for me and I like that. Now all of the balarka you have to, to wade through of ridiculousness in this movie, I'm glad they didn't have way too many overpowered ridiculous characters like the axe head dudes or the nail head dudes or whatever and you know a bunch of underground balarky stuff. How much I enjoyed this one from the wrapping up actually made it worse because I had to wade through all that crapola just to get to this good story that they should have told and removed other movies and ridiculousness to tell, the, to tell this like whodunit twisto aspect and so if you, if you guys are still here and you're still following me that is that is wrong so that is why I do not like this series but it's why I like this movie and it's why I'm glad that this movie series is over Fundamentally, I want to say that I enjoyed aspects of this, and I would rewatch those aspects if they were in some sort of like Josh's Snyder cut aspect of if I got to rewrite this and redo this and take things out of it and replace a bunch of the junk. But goodness, there's a bunch of stuff in this movie that just didn't make no sense. Zombies act like zombies. They're also like. All this stuff that was cut out. Oh, you know, she has powers. She doesn't have powers. This guy has powers. That doesn't have powers. The bad guy's this bad guy, and that guy's that guy, and th this guy's that guy. But not in a cool who done it way. The zombies are here. The zombies aren't there. We're gonna introduce this Asian guy. Never do anything, and then we're just gonna drag him behind the ship. And then all of a sudden, there's two more ships that come. But when they come, there's only one, and Isaac ends up blowing everybody up in it. And they're like, what does he do with the other one? There's supposed to be two coming. And it literally takes the guy forever to get inside of the city, but it took them, what, like 20 minutes? <laughs> to go from the outside where the tower was to literally the base? When it takes him, like, the entire time Alice is in the basement fighting all this stuff? Makes absolutely no sense. It was no longer sense. than four minutes. Yes. Uh, I want to give this movie a rating of four and a half. Because it was poor, but parts of it were fair. Which is what I, what I say a five is fair. That's my rating. I'm glad this is the last one, and I would. I feel like they could have done much, much, much better if they took out a bunch of the matrixy, ridiculous, bullocky junk. They had a good story. First off, for me, this is the most jumbled, 
fucked up mother lord bullshittery confusing jumbled up mess of a movie for me because I was sitting there and I was thinking about like all the stuff where they like change things and retcon things between, between movies and whatnot. so the fact that they said oh they've only made one antivirus or like there's only one antivirus left and I'm like well they had a whole supply of them in the first movie and the group took it but it all got destroyed in the helicopter crash and then all of a sudden the third movie Alice's blood is can be used to help develop a new cure in that science lab but we're gonna forget that because we want to see her and her uh, little clones of sisters go fuck up Wesker because he is in the movie and we forget about that whole thing about her blood being like part of the cure and whatnot and then Getting about it completely in the fifth one, which God Almighty. <sighs> Moving on to this movie, and all of a sudden, it's just one last random antivirus cure where you just smack it on the table like they did in the first film, and yeah, that's it. Everyone's pretty much dead who has T virus for the but most that, part. But that would make sense because they have to have a way to end the whole entire Earth, otherwise, that's why not the, the point I'm bringing up. Yeah, then why the heck would they do that whole thing? That's not the point of brain. It's fact that they ch they changed it so many times in there. That's one thing. Number two, is Wesker a good guy? Is Wesker a bad guy? Is Wesker a little bitch? Yes. <laughs> He's all three of them if you watch this entire series. Also, the back and forth on whose side the Red Queen is on, because in the first film she's bad, and she gets get she gets brought back in the fifth film, and she's like the complete and like evil as little bitch you can think well, she's of. Not and bad. Even, no, she's, it, she's good because she was trying to save humanity. The White Queen said in the third film that the Red Queen was actually completely evil and the White Queen is the good side. So, and when they retconned the whole White Queen out, they were like, oh, we're just going to combine some element to the White Queen and to the Red Queen just to make but it. But they explained that Old they Alice did, was they the They did one. explain it in this movie, Old Alice. but they did a terrible job at it. They said Old Alice uploaded it, which was the White Queen, which the White Queen infiltrated the, the Red Queen. But it's still a terrible job of explaining just kind of forgetting that fact that the Red Queen is supposed to be the evil mastermind. Because at one point she was a good queen when she was like, Alice, you're the cure. But then it was like... That's still a bad way. Yeah, she should have been a bad queen explain. there. If, if she was later a good explaining. queen. The story... <laughs> this felt like a watered-down version of the last Resident Evil we watched and it went through development hell. So, if you watch the first half of the movie, it's literally... See, 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 But once she gets to the tower, it's, everything just slows the fuck down. You're just like... Big, wide, huge scenes. And, like, I hate it. I honestly hate it when movies do that because that tells me that either the first half of the film had to get completely reshot or the second half of the film they had to reshoot that, one or the other. Usually it's the, it's the half that's, that's sped up. Um, camera cuts. My God. Oh, my God. It's, it, makes my, it makes my YouTube videos look like gold because literally it's just, like, blinking a thousand times. And I got migraines left and right watching those. Oh. I can't, it's hard to, like, talk about the good, like, uh, fight scenes that you were talking about for me, because I couldn't tell what the fuck was going on. So many bad, inconsistencies, so many, just, uh, this just felt like, like a last hurrah to them trying to say, oh, this would look cool in it, this would look cool in it, this would look cool in it. It's like, it's just, it was just so dumb. And, yeah, also, they're saying, this is the end. <laughs> it doesn't, it's still, like, it really, to me, like, the film itself, if you were to ignore everything else, it just, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. Because it tries to tell a compelling story, but a lot of the elements that are trying to explain the story is completely fucking stupid. 
oh, well, the world's going to end because, you know, we're killing each other, fires, global warming, uh, well, that this seems and ridiculous. that, and gasoline, and yada, You think he was just doing that? You think he was just doing that? You know to... what we should do to stop this from happening? We should be like God ourselves and end it in seven days. It was done before. Here's the virus. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they kind of throw, I know that we were picking on that scene, but I, I think that that scene is, is an, an aspect of, he's like, I just want to fuck up the world. Excuse. The fact that I was able to pretty much call out that the Alice that we were following throughout the story was not the same Alice that started the story, it's, it's just like complete and utter like, well, I saw that coming a mile away. That's fucking stupid. What, what's, okay, so like, the other thing I really want to like complain Red about is that original. they're preparing you for this giant like fight scene like at, at Washington, at, at the fucking Capitol and everything. And mm -hmm. yeah, all this stuff going on. And then we start this movie and they don't show anything. I'm glad that was going to be trash. It was going to be a bunch of bad CGI And about 80% of the stupid. cast that was in the last movie is gone. <clears throat> Only two characters that survived the entire fucking story was Claire and Alice. And yeah, the majority of the people that didn't, like, reprise from the previous movie was because of scheduling conflicts. And they've they, they said that their status alive is unknown, but I'm just going to assume that they did. They don't explain how Wesker gets to Raccoon City so quick. Teleports. Well, I understand the, the, the like, plot armor, but it's just like... You know, I, as much as I'm so glad they got rid of that last, the the scene between the last movie and this movie, I there's a bunch of questions they threw in there, like, how did you get away without Alice blowing the shit up? Did Alice, and also, they said, Alice, you, know, you have your power, he's, he, he's like, I have your power back, and then the Red Queen's like, no, you don't have your power back, he lied, but then... Then what did he infect yeah, her with? Then, then she shouldn't have the T-Virus at the end of the movie. He actually infected her with tapioca pudding. <laughs> no, yeah, infected her with something... That was also something. You're human now. It's like, well, she shouldn't, oh, be, she no, shouldn't have the T-virus. I really don't have anything else to say because I, I am... This, the last, these last two movies have made me so dumbfounded. The movie, in my opinion, is getting a 1 out of 10. I like that it's done. It <laughs> just... It's it's a 1 out of 10. I, I'm sorry. Anyways, this is my check. I'm done talking. Um, Krieger margin 4. An orphan. You're not, you're not. I'm orphaned. This movie left me an orphan. And, uh... Origin story. This left me an um, orphan origin story. Yeah. She's an orphan, everybody. She's a clone. Wait, no parents. We're not doing three bad horror movies in one night ever again. I'm signing out. This was too much. <laughs> too fucking much. You could have split much. it up over two days. <laughs>